Ogatropine is an interesting medication. It's a fun one to talk about because of how it works and where it works. Okay, so generic name is atropine. Trade name is atropin. But a lot of times you're just going to see it simply as atropine. Okay, what it's given for is it's given to decrease oral and respiratory secretions, treat sinus bradycardia and heart block, and treatment of bronchospasm. Okay. So as we talk about what it's given for, we can kind of start to understand how it works and what the purpose of it is. So uh, atropine is an anticholinergic. Okay, and what that simply means is it means that it inhibits the effects of the parasympathetic nervous system, specifically acetylcholine. Okay, so our autonomic nervous system is made up of two portions, right? And the whole purpose of the autonomic nervous system is to kind of control those things that we don't have to think about. Okay, our breathing, our digestion, all those things are things that we don't think about. They just happen. And those are part of the autonomic nervous system. There's two branches of that. There's the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so with atropine, what we're doing is we're inhibiting the effects of the parasympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic, the PNS, we'll just call it the PNS, the parasympathetic nervous nervous system or PNS, what it really does is it's that rest or digest portion, okay? So when the parasym- the PNS comes into effect, what it's doing is allowing us to rest, slows our heart rate down, allows us to kind of sleep, it uh, allows our, our, our body to start digesting our food and all those things. And so what atropine does is it comes in here and it blocks the effects of the PNS, okay? And what it really does is it, it really specifically blocks the effects of acetylcholine, okay? So acetylcholine is what the... It's the neurotransmitter that the PNS uses to do these rest or digest types of things, okay? So the inhibition of this acetylcholine causes our heart rate to increase, bronchodilation, and decreases GI and respiratory uh, secretion. Okay, so does that make sense? We're talking PNS, our, our parasympathetic nervous system, what it does, and then what atropine does, it comes in here and it blocks those effects, Okay, so now you can see why it's given for bradycardia. So in, in like our rest or digest state, our heart rate's going to slow down. We can give acetylcholine to increase our heart rate. Our salivary and our, our secretions are going to increase when we're trying to digest and rest and digest. And so we give atropine to decrease those secretions, okay? So its therapeutic class is antiarrhythmic. Its pharmacologic class is anticholinergic or antimucerinic. So some things to keep in mind here. Remember, we're, we're, we're talking specifically about our PNS and we're talking about blocking acetylcholine. So some things to keep in mind are we're going to avoid an acute hemorrhage, tachycardia, and angle closure glaucoma. That's going to be one you're going to be tested on is that you don't want to give these, is that you're going to avoid anticholinergics and angle closure glaucoma. Okay, we don't want to dilate our, our pupils a bunch with this uh, angle closure glaucoma, okay? We're going to monitor our patients for tachycardia and palpitations because, remember, we give atropine. It's going to increase our heart rate, okay? So we want to make sure we don't lead to tachycardia or these uh, palpitations with our patients. It can cause urinary retention in elderly patients, and it may uh, patients, some patients may experience contipation due to the slow GI motility. So remember, if we're giving it for a specific reason, the patient may begin to experience uh, slow GI motility and constipation. One thing I want you to keep in mind here is, is patients who are in the ICU or patients who are actively dying uh, will a lot of times be given atropine drops just under their tongue, and that's going to help decrease uh, the secretions in the mouth to help them breathe easier Okay, as, as they're dying. Now, what I've seen happen sometimes with uh, newer nurses or or people who aren't maybe paying attention very well is that these uh, atropine drops will come in little uh, like eye drop containers. Okay, and so I've seen nurses put these atropine drops that are supposed to go under the tongue to control secretions. I've seen them put them in the eyes of the patient. And what that causes, that causes a massive pupillary dilation. Okay, the pupils become huge and then we aren't giving them the medication as they need it to control these secretions. So really one, what, what you can do is if, if you read your MAR, if you pay attention to your MAR there as you're giving the medication, it's going to tell you where to give the medication. Okay, and how to give the medication. So make sure that you're paying. That's one of our, our, our checks, right? That's one of the things that we're doing. The right medication, right time, right dose, right place, right route, all that stuff. So those are some of the rights of medication. So that's what you really need to pay attention with is how is the medication supposed to be given? We will give it with bradycardia and the whole purpose of that is to try to increase our heart rate, okay? So with every medication, what I want, really want you to think about 
is giving a medication can lead to the opposite of kind of what we were giving it for, right? We were giving it for bradycardia, but it can lead to tachycardia and palpitations. Okay. We're giving it to uh, control secretions, but it's going to dry them up and all those things. So really, as you give medications, really think about what's the opposite effect of giving this medication and what can occur due to giving the medication. All right. So that is atropine. I hope that helps. I hope that kind of helps explain the autonomic nervous system, a little bit of difference between the sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, and where this is working on the parasympathetic nervous system to kind of have those opposite effects. This has been another episode of the Med Master Podcast brought to you by medmastercourse.com and nrsng.com. My name is John Haas, RN, CCRN, student nurse mentor, and your biggest fan. If you're ready to demolish nursing pharmacology once and for all, head over to medmastercourse.com and use the coupon code PODCAST to save 15% on lifetime membership to Medmaster Course. Medmaster Course is packed full of 30 plus hours of HD video and audio content with tons and tons of free cheat sheets and downloads. Demolish nursing pharmacology. Never guess a med again. Go to medmastercourse.com. Coupon code PODCAST. You guys know what time it is now. Go out and do something great. Happy nursing.